What's up, all you cool cats out there? We're going to take a look at another slip joint here on Slippy J Sunday. And this one is a TS-161 from Tucson. This is a Hogudong knife. According to the knife, according to the eBay uh, listings usually for this knife, this was a uh, design collaboration between Hogudong and Night Morning Design. So, just keep that in mind, I suppose. Uh, I can start off with... Uh, a little bit of uh, size comparisons here, but you know it would actually help if I open the thing up. We have a blade hole, not even really a nick or a, a fuller or anything like that. Just a full hole sort of thing there. We can see we got a decent amount of uh, very straight and then a uh, very acute coming up to the uh, just barely a drop point. Uh, yeah, for some uh, size comparisons, I have a couple of slip joints that people are probably kind of familiar with, so I'll go ahead and use those. Here it is against the uh, the Real Steel Luna. You can see it's a little bit thinner, but uh, and just barely longer than that. And if we're talking about a little bit thinner here, here's the Cold Steel Lucky one. We can see that it's definitely larger than that. I don't necessarily have any other um, slip joints that I really feel like a whole bunch of other people are probably familiar with. Uh, possibly the uh, the Range Buster. Um, this is the uh, the Boker Magnum one, but it uses the same dimensions as uh, Boker Plus models and Boker. If you're super bougie here in the U.S. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it's right around that same size of a uh, sod buster, that sort of thing. And, uh, well, yeah, I don't know, these are probably a little bit more niche, but there's the, uh, the concept, uh, wedge. Or at least the, uh, slip joint version of it, and the artisan cutlery biome. But uh, by and large, I think those uh, those first two, the Real Steel Luna and the uh, Cold Steel Lucky One, are probably what I'm going to be sticking with for uh, these uh, blade comparison sort of things for the slip joints. But, I mean, if you uh, have any other ideas or whatnot, yeah, let me know in the comments. Yeah, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is a Ho Yudong. Uh, Knife here. Yep, we got that little cricket sort of logo on there. You can also see this is an M390. That's very, very common for Tucson slip joints. And we do have bone for the handles on here. Doesn't necessarily pick up super nice on camera because of a lot of the uh, uh, overhead light and whatnot. But uh, it does technically have a bit of a grain pattern to it. It's not just absolute smooth white, which is kind of nice. It does look nice. It feels nice, and uh, I've only just barely um, kind of got a nick in the uh, the bone there on this one in particular. Um, as you can see, the uh, the liners on here are titanium. Uh, I've anodized these ones blue just because I thought it kind of contrasted well with the bone on there. Something that uh, Hoyu Dong has done on some other knives and continues on this one is the blade stock thickness is immense. Like, uh, I will measure it in a bit, but I do think it's like four millimeters, <laughs> which, uh, you know, I can understand for. Some applications, but generally not a slip joint. We do have some nice walk and talk on it, though. Yeah. yeah, spring on there is probably right under a seven. So it's it's pretty nice. It's probably not going to uh, come come out while you're using it or anything like that. You really do have to. Get a lot of pressure on there. However, uh, just like most of those, and I'll close it in 
So, yeah, you don't really have any protection if uh, it were to close on you. It's just going to chop your finger like a paper cutter. That's just kind of the, the nature of uh, slip joints in general, though, so I can't really hold it too much accountable. But some other knives do kind of compensate for that. But most of that compensation is uh, moving the sharpened blade length out quite a bit. So there you are. This one, for me, is comfortable as a three-finger grip. We do have a beak on the end there, so I guess if you have smallish to maybe close to normal hands, you could uh, comfortably get a full four-finger grip on there, but not for me, and that's perfectly fine. It's quite comfortable like this, so that's kind of nice. Uh, this one has a lanyard hole. There in the back that the uh, the bone doesn't extend out to. I suppose that kind of makes sense for, um, you know, just making sure that it's not going to wear on there if you actually do attach that. Kind of looking at it here, it looks a little bit like some sort of bird with a snub nose or something. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty decent um, construction on this guy. Uh, as... Usual, and I've mentioned in the past though, um, if you are using a screw construction on uh, natural bone handles, you have to really make sure if you're doing maintenance on them, not to over tighten them because that can very easily put too much pressure on it and uh, crack or split the bone. Usually just around that area, as you can see, there's a little uh, hairline sort of thing going on there. Uh, it's not much. I can just barely feel it with my fingernail there, but uh, you know it It certainly does happen. That's why generally a lot of slip joints that will use bone um, Are pinned at the factory so that you don't really have a whole lot of problems with that that goes on But let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some measurements here uh, Let's check the blade stock thickness no, I was definitely wrong with the whole uh, four millimeter, but it's still very, very thick uh, for that. And it's uh, 3.3 millimeters. Uh, the thickness, because of the, the bone and everything like that, is basically 0 0.51 of an inch. Not exactly the, uh, the most slender thing in the world. And let's see the blade length on this guy. We'll go with uh, just a touch under 2.8 inches there. So fairly respectable blade length on there. You know, obviously it's not quite as large as a buck 110 or something like that. But if that's what you want, you should probably get that instead anyway. Besides, that one has a uh, backlock on there. So that's probably a little bit more safe in that particular uh, situation there. But yeah, nice. It's under a uh, three inch blade, so easily carryable in a lot of places. Uh, M390 blade on there, and the blade geometry on this guy is actually pretty darn good. Um, it's not like an axe behind the edge or anything like that. Obviously, I've sharpened this thing to a uh, 15 degree angle after the fact. And it's uh, kind of interesting. Uh, the geometry of the uh, the flat grind out here feels very very nice and thin but moving out to the uh, the uh, the belly area and out to the tip it actually feels a little bit thicker obviously it's not a compound grind and it's not a distal taper or anything like that either so uh, I don't know maybe it just feels a little bit different out towards the tip there but it does a pretty darn good job at cutting uh, what a lot of people would probably like about it is the, uh, the very long straight portion of the blade. Uh, I tend to personally like a little bit more, uh, of a gradual belly rather than just a, a straight flat point, unless I'm usually dealing with a, a sheep's foot or a Warren Cliff style blade. Well, this works out all right, but yeah, that belly up top there just does seem a little bit more out of a useful area. I guess if it was further back, like a, a standard drop point, I guess the uh, a lot more of that belly would be a little bit more accessible to you. 
Well, that being said, this blade shape is fairly common. It's a fairly common pattern. So it's definitely has to have some sort of um, benefits to it. It's just not immediately obvious to me. So there's that. I'm not, uh, I can be a wealth of knowledge sometimes and a dearth of knowledge at other times. And that's definitely going to be the case here. But yeah, not, not all that bad of a knife. Uh, I do like this one more than the other Hou Yudong that I have. Uh, probably because that one, I think, has thicker blade stock thickness and a blade that's like half the length of this thing. So it, it's uh, a little bit more ridiculous. This one's a little bit more down to earth, I think. Not bad at all, really. Uh, I really would like to see the uh, the blade stock thickness probably taken down a bit. I would like to see maybe like 2.5 rather than 3.2 or something like that, just for, you know, having that added sliciness sort of thing. And at that, it would still give you a nice robust sort of thing there. But I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of um, reasons one could probably do that. Uh, it could be that they had a lot of... Um, uh, lock bar steel pieces already milled to this particular width so to uh, kind of salvage that or change it up a little bit so that they didn't have to uh, re-machine anything that they uh, used kind of thicker blade stock to match that I don't know that's just kind of one sort of idea on here it's not too bad to uh, take apart and this guy does have uh, well you probably can't see that but I can uh, take a little flashlight in here yeah it's got a blade stock inside there. Uh, I do appreciate that a lot for people who might want to fidget with these knives in their pockets or something like that. You can't squeeze that one and have the, uh, the blade push in further by pushing out on the, uh, the blade spring there. Fantastic. Uh, really cuts down on any kind of blade wrap that you would end up having. So yeah, we got most of those measurements out of the way. We just have kind of the, uh, the weights and stuff. Stuff going on left. And this guy is 2.3839 ounces or basically 67 and a half grams. So this also uh, does kind of hit that uh, ounce and inch mark. I think right around there. I might be wrong on that. I completely forgot exactly how long this thing was since I, you know, I've breathed since uh, I thought about uh, that and did the measurements earlier in the video. So y'all can call me out one way or the other on there. But either way, not a super heavy knife, uh, but very robust because it does have those, uh, those nice titanium liners that we got going on there. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to take this thing apart because most slip joints are kind of a pain in the butt to put back together but this does have bronze washers on the inside and that does make for a, a decent action not amazing action but uh you know with the walk and talk on there you know it certainly works fantastically so there we go there's the uh, ts-161 bone um i don't know if they've made any other versions of that but i do think this model number is referred to as the 161-bone Maybe I'm wrong on that. I'll, I'll have to double check. But either way, it's a neat slip joint. Uh, according to eBay, this is a night morning collaboration along with Ho Yi Dong. So there you go. Uh, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching. I don't really have anything else to say on this one. So uh, we'll just go ahead and leave it at that. Uh, I appreciate y'all for watching. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo.